Okay, so here we are with uh, me and Danish girlfriend is right there who doesn't like to be seen or heard. And Danish girlfriend had a hankering for Japanese food. Now we're not in Denmark anymore. We're in the United States. But as she says, the true spirit of the Dane always shines through because whether they're exploring new lands and treasures or exploring new cuisine, that is what Danes and the Viking spirit does. So Danish girlfriend said we need to go to Mitsua to get some cha Japanese food and we're going to explore how the Danish spirit lives in America through this visit to Mitsua, which is a very fantastic Japanese. And we have made it to the food court. First stop, she likes to eat some Japanese food so she's inspired on what she might want to eat because while the Vikings, the Vikings did not maraud aimlessly, they knew what they wanted. So my girlfriend wants a Viking game plan for the Mitsua experience. And we start off with the food court, as you can see, a bustling place replete with all these wonderful Japanese dishes. And she's picking something out now because also like a Viking, you have to find a seat. And that means find the seat and then go explore. Like we now have a base camp for our meal. And Danish girlfriend is now off looking to, to forage. And then we will do our major shopping, where we're gonna have a very delicious um, meal followed after we had our little sample. Danish girlfriend won't tell me what it is, but she says it's good, and that's all that I need to do. Shrimp tendon. They, those who wanted to pick up on Danish girlfriend heard a muffled version of her voice, and now we begin this fantastic meal. And also we have some miso soup. Mm, delish. I'm just taking a moment to say, if you can make broccoli really tasty, you've got a good cooking style. And that, they have made broccoli tasty. So George Bush, President 41, you would eat your broccoli if you came to Mitsua and their food court. All right, so we have a number of delicious items. We have the rice here, which is very good. This is a poached egg. You would never would have thought that's a poached egg. This is some tempura, shrimp tempura, some vegetables. This is the miso soup, and this is ginger and a palate cleanser because you should always clean your palate so you can enjoy food as always. Interestingly enough, Danish girlfriend was telling, showing me a book about Japanese food that now is prominently displayed in Copenhagen bookstores. So whether or not you want to believe it, this is becoming Danish food. That is a bold statement, I know. but. Danes are known to be bold and they make what they want their own. So whatever the Dane says is Danish is Danish. That's what Danish girlfriend says. And as Danish girlfriend who is sitting over there who doesn't like to be seen or heard points out that the Japanese stole, appropriated from the uh, Portuguese. So anyone who says I am a person who is appropriating Japanese food is realizing that there, my appropriation is actually a appropriation of a Portuguese dish. And where did the Portuguese find it? That's another question. But maybe there's a little Danish influence. I always like to say there's a little Danish influence because why not? Because you know what? You can't prove it. 600 years ago, some Danish person who knew how to sail said to a Portuguese guy, says, hey, and we're not gonna say his name, but because we want to keep it secret, said, how about we sail to Japan and show them your frying technique, and then the whole world will get to taste this 600 years from now. That's forward thinking. That's Danish thinking. Of course, when the Japanese appropriated from the Portuguese, appropriation had not been outlawed. So they got it grandfathered in. All right. After our delicious lunch, Danish girlfriend and I are now, there's our cart, and we are off to shop for food. And part of the, the wonderment of the place is just seeing, they have onions, but they're different onions. And they, and they also have things like sticky buns, beans, sticky beans, and we're gonna see all that. So let's go, let's go a Viking in Mitsua, the Japanese market. You can even get the root that they make wasabi by. And I'll tell you something, it's a fancy root because it's $260 per pound. That is a 
that is almost something worth its weight in gold. Well, and I was talking to Danish girlfriend, and she says, she points these things out, she knows what they are, and I go, I've never seen this stuff before. There's literally stuff that I, can, I don't recognize. I mean, look at this stuff. This stuff is, it looks, I don't know, it could be an egg, it could be a, a dumpling, it could be probably a softened marble, because I think that exotic places would be able to soften a marble so that I could eat it. The Danish girlfriend just says, yes, dear, and we'll move along. And then you get to a point where you go, what is this? And you look at it and you just go, I don't know. And it's mostly in Japanese and you go, all right, well, I'm either going to try it or I'm just going to go, I don't know. This one, I've decided to say, I don't know. And of course, we finally made it to the sticky beans, which I think are stinky beans. But my girlfriend says sticky beans. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to buy some of those for some of my friends. We might report on that later. I'm going to have some myself. I'll report on that later for sure. And they've got a very interesting selection of meats. They're Japanese meats. And some of them are very well marbled, but they don't come cheap. All right, so we're still in this supermarket. You, you can spend an incredible amount of time in the supermarket. I had to put on my hat, my coat, and my gloves because I am starting to get cold. But there's an amazing selection, it's like the fried oysters. Yeah, well, we're here to try. That's the whole point. That's the Viking spirit. And talk about being a Viking. You want to be at sea. So if you can't be at sea all the time, you have seaweed, which is always there. And apparently, you can use this as a refresher, an appetizer, with steamed rice and with noodles. So, no need to pull things off your longboat. Now that we've finished with the food, we're now looking at some of the products that they import from Japan that you know you might like. Like that grill that they were making that stuff on. You can buy that here as well. So we are in the sake aisle, which is the last aisle you traditionally go to because you want to know what you've bought. Now you know what you're going to drink. But as you can tell, our cart is full of tasty goodness. And well, that's the whole point. Now, I've had some of it before, but I haven't had a lot of it before. My Danish girlfriend, who is behind me, doesn't like to be seen or heard, has orchestrated this procurement process. And when we get home, we are going to have a very fine Japanese style meal. And now we are home. And Danish girlfriend, who is, who is out there, doesn't want to be seen, doesn't want to be heard, has made a delicious, I don't know what you call it, it's kind of sushi, but it's not sushi, it's got all these little parts to it, and it's going to be delicious. Mm -mm. That's, why you, that's why you go a Viking to different nationality supermarkets.